All right, well. I hope you are feeling better. Your benevolence. Must I perform the divination seance? What? Oh, oh no, 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 no. We merely require your testimony this time. Testimony. Be of any value. Your benevolence. Princess Rafa seems awfully depressed. After what she's been through, summoning her again is like rubbing salt in the wound. Being unable to perform the seance was probably the last straw. She feel bad. She feel bad. I hope she doesn't pass out again. Prosecutor Sadmati. May I ask you something? Of course, your benevolence. I, um, I've been meaning to ask you this since yesterday. Did you know about Queen Amara? And about me? From where did you hear such a thing? From Mother. And only yesterday. Rafa was carrying on about telling the truth to people. So I told her. I told her what the truth really was. For it is up to a mother to discipline her child. I see. Be as it may, your benevolence, it has no bearing upon our trial here today. So there is no need to let it trouble you. I know. Garan told Rafa about something other than Amara's status? Sounds like it. What could it be? Rafa, the defense has proposed something preposterous. They somehow think your father was already dead when Dirk entered the tomb. But I believe you can prove them wrong. Are you prepared to do what is required of you? Yes, I am ready to testify. Very well, then your benevolence, your testimony if you please. What Rafa witnessed. On the day of the murder, I was gazing upon the courtyard from my second floor veranda. Yes, I am a princess. Around 2.30 p.m., I saw my father heading for Amara's tomb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotta know some bad things. Then at about 2.45, I saw a barbed head and company enter the courtyard. I saw no one go in or out of the tomb after my father entered at about 2.30. Your second floor veranda. Uh, she must be talking about that house facing Inga's private residence. So that's the location from which you saw your father? And at about 2.30? Yes, and shortly after that, you people arrived at the royal residence. So after the minister entered the Mara's tomb at around 2.30... No one went in or out of there until the murder was discovered. The tomb is closed to outsiders, so no one could have snuck in before the murder. That rules out any possibility of a third party lying in wait to slay my poor husband. Or so she'd like us to believe. Now hear me, you useless lawyer. Cease this charade and bow before me. For I, Queen Garan, shall finally have your head! Uh, forgive me, your evidence, but first let us allow the defense to question the witness. Okay. Unless he was already dead before then, and then somebody, like, channeled themselves as Inga and then just walked in? 
That seems convoluted. I don't even know. On the day of the murder, I was gazing upon the courtyard from my second floor veranda. That sounds nice. I wish I had a veranda. You say you've been watching the courtyard until we arrived, correct? That seems like an awfully long time. There's much that weighs on my mind. I see. She really does sound troubled. I don't think she ever fully recovered from the previous trial. Your benevolence. <laughs> As Crown Princess, you are destined to rule this kingdom one day. That means there will be many things that you alone must determine. Things like how to keep your people happy, and what is true, and what is false. And most importantly, what role you must play therein. I wonder if I am even up to the task. I guess it's not easy being a princess. Um, your benevolence? I'd be happy to lend an ear if you'd ever like to talk. <laughs> what would you know of my woes? Do not presume to exceed your station in life. Sheesh! Teenagers! Your benevolence, what did you witness from your veranda? Well... Around 2.30pm I saw my father heading for Amara's tomb. Hold it! Did your father seem different or troubled in any way? Hmm, let me think. Oh! There was one unusual thing. There was? Yes, a shriek emanated from within my father's quarters. After which I witnessed him bolt outside, his countenance drained of its usual color. That's very weird! That's extremely weird! He screamed and he was looking pale? What do you suppose happened? I know not. Perhaps he had a bad dream. Maybe it was a nightmare about being raked over the coals by the queen. It seems our young lawyer here wishes to hasten his journey to the, journey to the Twilight Realm. I'll have you know Ingo loved when I raked him over the coals. Sorry, sorry, that was rude of me. Does the defense believe the witness's last statement to be important? Yes! I believe it is. I would like the witness to add it to her testimony. My father let out a scream and came dashing out of his room, his face pale. Hold it! Hmm. And why do you think he screamed? Was he surprised by someone who didn't belong there? Did anyone else come out? I, I, I didn't see anyone else, just my father. That last statement was seriously lacking in conviction. Should I press her on this? Press... Be nice and let it be. Press softly. Or press harshly. I think... I think we press her softly with his song? Your benevolence. Y yes? This incident was a real shock to us all. It must have been really terrible for you, but I want to let you know, I know how you feel. P please stop, you, you presume too much. It's times like these that you need something to take your mind off things. How about we all go on a picnic together or something? What? I need no sympathy from you. Go on your little picnic alone, hornhead. Well, that didn't go well. Apollo, you have to take a more aggressive approach with people like her. Yeah, he's probably right. Now, back to my testimony. Okay, so picnic, not so much. We're gonna go back to that statement. Alright, we're gonna press harshly. Let's slam it in her face. Your benevolence! Let's have some details! The more the better! Give Papa some juicy details! Throw them on the table! D details you say? 
Yes! For example, are you sure you didn't see anyone in the royal residence before 2.30? Uh, I... Well, is that a yes or a no? Spit it out, princess! foreign devil, I'd been gazing upon the courtyard since about two yesterday, yet I saw no one other than my father. Oh, if only I had stopped him then. I think you've struck a nerve, or rather, obliterated one. Maybe I pressed a little too hard. Still, that last statement seemed a little off somehow. So you didn't see anyone except your father in the courtyard after 2 p.m., huh? Please add that to your testimony, your benevolence. I had been gazing upon the courtyard since about 2, but father was the only one I saw. Hold it! Is the royal residence always so empty? Naturally, it is where the royal family lives, and we are few in number. Besides Nina and the little birds who visit, I have no one else to talk to. Is there anything more stereotypically princessy than talking to birds? So Nina wasn't around at all yesterday? It seems she was quite busy. I was all alone the entire day. It's been like that a lot lately. Rafa doesn't go to school, so she probably doesn't have any close friends. She must lead a rather solitary life. I guess being a princess isn't all it's cracked up to be. Rafa, I shall buy you a new servant. I, I don't want you to buy me a servant like some sort of pet. I want Nina. I'm beginning to see why Rafa turned out like she did. Your benevolence, please tell us about what happened after you saw your father. Well, it was around 2.30 when I saw him heading for the tomb. Then at about 2.45, I saw Bond, Head, and company enter the courtyard. 2.45? Yes, I believe that's around when we arrived. 2.45s. Mr. Wright, Athena, Dirk, and I were running around the tomb. Yes, I was taken aback as we don't normally see commoners in the palace courtyard, especially not ones as awful as you. Even more shocking was that Dirk, a wanted man, was with you. Yeah, I suppose so. I thought the villainous leader of the Defiant Dragons was here with his minions. Because it was, you know, time for a revolution. I think you've been watching too much of that TV show. I have already banned its broadcast for containing content unsuitable for our kingdom. Besides, the actress playing Rafa looked nothing like her. I can't have my subjects feeling so disappointed when they see the real Rafa. Disappointed? Are you saying she was too pretty and that Rafa's ugly? Mean. Bad mom. Mother! Why are you so cruel to me? Are you so ashamed? Once I'm all grown up, I shall be just as full figured as that actress. Oh, come on. It doesn't. That doesn't matter. That doesn't matter! She's placing all her hopes on one final growth spurt. Phoenix! Don't it! For her sake, I hope it's in her DNA. Who cares, guys? She looks lovely right now. She looks... I suppose you could always hope for a miracle. <laughs> I'll show you. I shall... I shall double my milk intake and grow up big and strong. There, there, your benevolence. I think you are fine. Just the way you are. Thank you, Judge! The only one in the entire courtroom who speaks any sense, apparently. Now may I ask that you continue with your testimony? I wish I could grow up faster. I saw no one go in and out of the tomb after my father entered at about 2.30. Hold it! Is it possible you missed seeing someone pass through? No, my veranda was, has a commanding view of the entire grounds, and I saw no one else. Oh, we have a statement from Albie that's going to prove that she was not paying enough attention. Okay, huh, but that doesn't seem right somehow. 
Hans, do not underestimate my daughter. She may be lacking elsewhere, but her eyes are the finest. What a bad mom! I'm just like, ugh, I'm feeling repulsed by this whole thing. L lacking elsewhere? Talk about a mother I'd never wish on my worst enemy. She needs Nana now more than ever. Rafa didn't see anybody in the royal residence area after 2 p.m. That's a really long time to just look at a courtyard. She's probably lost in thought. She's at an age where I'm sure she's got a lot on her mind. Okay, so... I need to figure out what timing is on Albie's statement, but I'm pretty sure... At around 2 p.m., Shadow was surprised by a firecracker, ran into the courtyard, and stole Nana's hat. So, they had footprints all over the place. She was just all over the place. So, okay. Let's go to 2.30 p.m. I had been gazing upon the courtyard since about 2, but Father was the only one I saw. You should have seen a dog running around in the courtyard if you've been looking at it that long. Objection! I'll be! Your benevolence, you're covering for someone, aren't you? Huh? I, I, I... I don't know what you're talking about. Sorry, Rafa, but you're not gonna like this. Well, the thing is, I have a statement here that you might find interesting. It's from a witness who claims that around 2 p.m. his dog got loose and ran into the palace courtyard. That's when the little fellow stole this hat from someone. Ah! That's... That's Nina's! I mean... Nothing! Never mind! I... You fool of a daughter! It seems the princess made a blunder. Um, so let me get this straight. This is Nana's hat, which means she had to have been in the royal residence at around two. If so, then you had to have seen Nana sometime after 2 p.m. yesterday. No! Please, your benevolence, tell us what you really saw. Uh it is as you say, Hornhead. I... I saw Nana. And I saw that... That dingbat dog steal her hat from her in front of my father's residence. I knew it. Why didn't you say so in the first place? B because, um... My mother told me not to. What? Would you care to explain your eminence? I requested she withhold said information, for it is of no relevance to this case. Objection! I don't think that's true. You don't get to decide. If you disagree, then prove it that it is relevant to the case at hand. Oh, I will. Your benevolence, please tell us everything you witnessed when you saw Nana. All right. When I saw that dingbat dog attack Nana, I ran to help. I raced from my second floor veranda down into the courtyard. Wait. That means that while you were coming down, you took your eyes off the courtyard. Yes, but only for a moment. This. This is crucial testimony. If you took your eyes off the courtyard, it means somebody else could have entered the tomb without you ever knowing. Ah! Your benevolence, are you sure no one else was there? Uh, oh, um, yes? She's hiding something again. What about Nana? Were you able to help her? When I got down to the courtyard, Nana was... She was gone. Gone? Yes, and... I never saw her again after that. Any idea what happened? Th that 
Dean? That dog must have gobbled her up. Shadow ate an entire woman. That would be very impressive. And terrifying. But impressive. I seriously doubt that. But how could Nana simply disappear while Rafa wasn't looking? Rafa must know something. The only question is, what? You know where Nana disappeared to. Do you have any idea where Nana disappeared to? What do you mean? Well, during the time you took your eyes off the courtyard, someone could have headed into the tomb. And it just so happens that Nana disappeared right at that moment. No! Wait, you think Nana had something to do with the murder? I have a really bad feeling that we're about to find a dead Nana in a sarcophagus. I have a really bad feeling about that. Ugh. I don't think we can rule it out. It sounds like some, something had kept Nana occupied since the early morning. Plus, she was seen right before the murder, and then seemed to vanish into thin air. You're right. And since she's Rafa's attendant, she could come and go as she pleased within the palace guard grounds. Could Rafa's attendant really be the killer? But that would mean... First my father, and now Nana. These were the people I trusted most. How could this be? Objection! Do not heed their lies. Lawyers are a foul breed. Quick to claim that a third party is to blame for a crime. Nana did not enter the tomb. That much is clear. Certain. Is it? If you say it's certain, then it probably isn't. How can you be so sure? When Nana's hat was stolen, that crazed curse spilled an urn full of water upon my husband's doorstep. Is that not right, Rafa? Yes, yes it is. While that dingbat dog was tugging on Nana's hat, it tipped over the urn. The bottom of her shoes would have been soaked with water. If she had truly headed into the tomb with wet shoes, she would have left shoe prints along the way. But the only shoe prints to be found belong to my husband, Inga. Huh? Th then. That's right. Nana never did go into the tomb that day. Instead, she entered my husband's private quarters and went where? How do you know? It's quite simple. Shoe prints were discovered in Inga's private quarters. Shoe prints that belonged to Nana. That's right, Edward and I did see some shoe prints in there. Hmm. Now, do you understand? Nina could not possibly have gone into the tomb. And that supposed third person at the crime scene is but a figment of your imagination. Uh, another glorious deduction! All hail the genius of this her eminence, Queen Garan! Bow down before her glory, witless lawyer! Urdi Haragaran. Naturally. Can these guys fanboy any harder? But is it really true? Did Nana not go into the tomb? Excuse me, but... Mr. Wright? Your benevolence, what time was it when that dog attacked Nana? I believe it was about 2.15pm. I see. Apollo, if Nana entered Inga's private quarters at around 2.15pm, and Inga came racing out at around 2.30, pale-faced and screaming, then... Ah, I know what you're getting at. Yes, that might explain his scream. Would the defense please share their theory regarding Justice Minister Inga's scream? Certainly, Your Majesty. 
Ministering a scream because he saw a ghost, he had a bad dream, he was attacked by Nana. I just have to press that one to see what happens. <clears throat> Maybe he was attacked by Nana. This would make the Justice Minister's private quarters the real scene of the crime. No. Objection. Funny, but no. Does your ETC know no bounds? The Minister Bodness' body was found in the tomb. Or are you suggesting that the body was moved? <clears throat> Do I think the Minister was moved from his private quarters? I think the possibility... Uh, exists? Considering the fact that the body was found in the tomb, I'd say there is a possibility. Hmm, what utter nonsense. Rafa had been watching the courtyard. Yet you would suggest that someone could have transported the body unnoticed. You have a point there. In that case, I'd say there's no way that the body was moved. After all, there was an awful lot of blood in the tomb. I understand if the scream was in reaction to Nana's attack, but Inga died in the tomb. We need to explain how those two realities could coincide. How are we supposed to do that? Well, maybe. Maybe where he was stabbed and where he died were two completely different locations. Oh! What do you mean? It's just, let's look at this as simply as possible. If the minister's body wasn't moved, he might have been stabbed by Nana in his private quarters, but then died in the tomb. Hmm. Hmm, I see. On the one hand, that seems plausible, but on the other, it seems decidedly implausible. Prosecutor Sabendi, what is that fool babbling on about now? Is this a riddle from one of those fortune cookies Americans seem so fond of? Perhaps, but I believe he himself does not know what he means to say. In all likelihood, it was a poor attempt to confuse us. We should simply ignore him. Objection! I wasn't finished yet, so hold up on the analysis, would you? The autopsy report never stated that the minister's death was instantaneous, so he could have conceivably moved from one place to another after being stabbed. Oh my, are you... Are you suggesting he ran all the way to the tomb with a knife sticking out of his back? Well, yes, that's the gist of it. In short, Mr. Inga saw Nana with a knife, let out a scream, and when he turned his back to her to flee... Right, and that's when he was stabbed from behind. Well, Your Majesty, does my theory hold water? How dare you bore me like this? Huh? You are a humorless moron, spewing an inner stream of unamusing drivel. I wasn't trying to be funny, Your Eminence. Prosecutor, enlighten this ignorant clown in lawyer's clothing. Your Eminence. Ha! No! Please not this! I don't want to. I don't want to have beads on my head. Nayuta! You dull, slow-witted, putrid-minded lawyer. Perhaps you would be too stupid to notice you had been stabbed in the back, but a normal person would have noticed due to the excruciating pain. N now hold on! Ah! Allow me to teach you the meaning of pain. <laughs> ah, please don't! Nita has a point. Normally most people would notice a dagger in their back. Metaphorically or literally. Oh, yeah, I doubt someone could ignore pain like this. <laughs> Still, in this case, it's the word normally that we should emphasize. Apollo, take another look at the court record. Uh, right. There must be something that explains this. 
There's a reasoning it didn't feel any pain. He had medicine for his back pain, so his back was more numbed than usual. So he might have been like, ah! Oh, just my back act. My back's acting up again. What a pain. Well, let's go. And the defense will submit evidence proving just that. Very well, please present your evidence. Why didn't Justice Minister Inga notice that he had been stabbed? Because he had a bad. Because he's used to being. to having killer back pains. Ah! Th those are my father's painkiller shots! The defense will explain the significance of this evidence. Minister Inga suffered from terrible back pain, so he often injected himself with these. We're told that one shot in the back would make all his pain go away. All his pain. Really, just really mellow him out. With this, it's easy to explain what happened. Don't tell me you didn't know about these, your eminence. <laughs> you can't mean... Minister Inga was stabbed in his back, close to where he usually injected the painkiller. Therefore, it's entirely possible that he hadn't noticed that he'd been stabbed. What? What's this? That'd be kind of crazy. Ah, well, we're not gonna go to my meeting. Then, then, are you suggesting just a minister, Inga? Really ran off with a knife protruding from his back? I am your majesty. So then, when I saw my father, he had a knife sticking out of him? I mean, with that cape of his, I, I couldn't see his back very well. Yes, the knife was there. It was just plunged in so deep you didn't notice it under the cape. Therefore, when you saw your father, he was already dead. Murdered by Nana in his private quarters. Pupukunka! <laughs> Holy mother of Kurain! Are we dealing with the living dead here? No, he was just bleeding to death and hadn't done it yet. Well, technically, he wasn't dead yet. I know it's hard to believe, but this is a plausible sequence of events. And once Minister Inga arrived at the tomb, he could have removed the knife and dropped dead from blood loss. Nina killed my father. There must be some mistake. The defense would like to call Nana to the stand if we can find her. Objection. You seek to drag an innocent old woman to the stand with no proof whatsoever. Well, there's no real proof, but... Hmph. What a tangled web of expedient lies you weave. I can no longer tell fact from fiction. Who or what shall I believe in now? I'm sorry, Rafa. All I've done is confuse you. But I have a sneaking suspicion Nana's involved in this case, one way or another. Just when I thought we'd blown this case wide open. Well, there's no turning back now. 